task here today in your task explain how to determine when a graph has continuous data and when a graph has discrete data tell your neighbor please okay time's up can i have your attention back up here please okay volunteer how do i know it's discrete is sarah okay how do i know it's continuous Dasha? when there's like the arrows and and a line so discrete Discrete means they're just dots. Continuous means you have the lines, and sometimes they have arrows, sometimes they don't. Sometimes they'll just be lines connected by, or dots connected by lines. Okay, and they could be curved, or they could be not curved. They could have a dot on one end and an arrow on the other. In fact, they could actually be shapes. Like That's circles. continuous. Okay? So all continuous have lines. Discrete does not. Very good. Okay, quick. That was a quick review of yesterday. So, so again, if if you kind of look at it this way, I mean, that's not as cool as my drawings, I know. But discrete data set of inputs, where that only consists of um, certain numbers in an interval, whereas continuous input values that consist of all numbers within that interval. Okay, between two points. So you have the shaded area there, or the connected points. All right. So I want to try some different, some different problems here. These are, these are some story problems that we want to go through. And I know you're going to have one like this on your quiz. I'm going to put one like it on your quiz. So make sure you uh, take some good notes on it here. So number, number eight for our monitoring progress here. This is out of your book. You're out of your textbook. So you're not going to find it in your student journal. But we work through it together. And I gave you some grid paper to kind of help out if you want to do so take some notes on your note paper and then do the work in your table on your grid paper. That's great. But the linear function m equals 50 minus 9d represents the amount m in dollars of money you have after buying d DVDs. Find the domain of the function. Is the domain discrete or continuous? And then graph the function. Now I found that it's not. It's a little easier to go through this in, in maybe a different order. But first thing I want you to do is to answer this question. Is it discrete or continuous? Based in context of this problem, if you were to graph this, would it be discrete or continuous? Talk about it with your groupies real quick. Come up with a reason why. Okay, wrap up conversation, please. Hey, how many say discrete? Raise your hand. How many say continuous? Raise your hand. Okay, so why is it discrete? Yeah? Because if you had a line, then you'd be going through not just the integers, and you can't really have half of CD. Okay, so let's say I just do, now this is not the graph of this, so you don't have to copy this down, but let's just say I do this. Okay, and there is my line, just based on like what, what we've always graphed, and I, I didn't put my whole x, y axis here, so maybe I do that. So first let me do that. Okay, there. I've got a line. All right, these are DVDs here. Why? Because, well, DVD, that's like my x value, and that replaces my, my x-axis, which is my independent variable. My, the amount of money is going to be dependent on the number of DVDs I buy. It's like going to the store, right? The amount it costs depends upon the number of DVDs. So this would be our M over here, our money. All right. So if I buy one DVD, it's going to cost a certain amount. All right. In this case, it costs how much? No. And it's nine. I have 50 bucks to spend, right? It costs nine bucks. Okay? Now, this is not a good graph for this that, because you're actually decreasing, but that's okay. Let's just say if I buy one, it costs nine bucks. If I buy two, it costs eight, 18 bucks. Okay? Everyone with that? What if I buy this many? Can you do that? You know, like, yeah, you like go up to the shelf and you like open it up and like oh you know what I can only afford half today so you like break it in half. I'll be back tomorrow for the other half. Okay, just hold on to it for me. Okay, yeah. So is this discrete or continuous? Discrete. Discrete. This is a continuous graph. Does that make sense for this data? No, because you can't have halves. Okay, in context of this problem, you cannot have a half a DVD. In fact. Let's talk about other things you can't have. What are over here? Negatives. negatives. Can you have negative DVDs? No. no. Can you have 
What's over here? Negative, negative money. You know, some of us have negative money. Okay, <laughs> that's called debt. But in this in this problem, we can't have negative money. So really, our graph is just confined to here. So it can go on forever in terms of cost. Just you keep buying DVDs. However, will you ever go lower than zero? No. So you would have a closed dot here and a line that goes up forever. That's the context of this problem. So you have to understand the types of problems you're dealing with. Yeah? No, you could, if you buy zero DVDs, it costs zero dollars. Right? So right now, none of us have bought a DVD today, most likely, at the store. Some of you might have. Okay? So, so zero and zero. That's okay. That's where we're all at. You just don't graph the bottom part of your grid. You keep it in this quadrant. Okay? So if I'm graphing this, let's go ahead and graph this. Take your graph paper out. Okay? So on your graph paper, move that so we can actually see it. We're graphing M equals 50 minus 9D. Now it's easier to graph them if you actually make a table out of this. So remember yesterday we um, made our H looking table where in this table this would be our what? This, this would be our X which is D in this one and this would be our Y which is M. This is our independent, this is our dependent. And then in here what do we have? This, this little expression. 50 minus 9D. That's what we're doing to our input. So when we put in a value for D, we get an output of M. Okay? Well, how, how many DVDs could you buy? Could you buy, you can't buy negative. You could buy none. If you buy zero, how much money? It says, find... This represents the amount of money you have after buying it. So if I don't buy any, how much do I have? The safety if you're in debt. If 50 bucks. Buy. Right? So how much did you start with? $50. You walk in the store with 50 bucks. If you don't buy anything, you still have 50. Okay? If you buy one, how much do you have? You have 41. Right? It costs $9. So you can only buy a certain number of DVDs. Can you buy two? Yeah, you're now down to 32. Can you buy three? Yes. Yeah, you're now down to 23. Okay, can we buy four? Yes, you got, and obviously we're not taking into account tax here, but you're now down to? What if we aren't? What if it's 14? Really Can I buy five? Yeah. All right. Oops, that's a 50. <laughs> You're now down to five. Can I buy six? No. Tell your neighbor why you can't buy six. You don't have money. That's when you, that's when you ask your buddy for more money. Hey, <laughs> hey how come? Yeah. Yeah, you have to borrow from that. You're like looking at the dude behind you in line. You're like, hey, hey, hey can I borrow how much? $40. Yeah, can I borrow four bucks? Okay, you can't do that. Well, I guess you could. I, I, I just look back at the person and say, no, you can't. Okay, so we talked about this graph only exists in positive world. That means in our X and Y axis, it only exists in at least they're all happy. this quadrant right here. They're all happy at least. We don't graph anywhere else other than that quadrant. Now, usually we wouldn't use this type of grid for it, but I wanted to make a I wanted to make it very clear to you that look, you only graph in that quadrant. Okay? And if I'm graphing it, really I'm talking about what type of data? Discrete or continuous? Discrete. Discrete data. Okay? And on the y axis, what's my label? Yeah, money. Yeah, money. In dollars. Okay? And y axis, what's our label? 
DVDs. Okay. What should we go up by on X? Now, what should we go up by? One. One. One, two, three, four, five. What do I need to go to? Just five, right? Six didn't work. I see what you're saying, Mercedes. You actually are going down here, right, on this. But what should we, we have to go up by a certain amount. So we have to get to at least 50, and we need to have a low of five at least. You could go by fives, yeah. If you go five, 10, 15, you don't have to keep labeling. You can go 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50. You could just label the top one 50, and then we know you went up by fives. Okay, then we plot our points. Hi. You could. Yeah, if you want to go up by nines, you could. Okay, I'm going to go 0, 50. That puts me right there. And it's a dot. And then 141, that puts me right about there. And then 232 puts me right. So it might want to label these because it's kind of hard to figure out where I'm at. All right. So 32, right about there. 323, right about. Star. 414. Star. 55. Five. All right. Is that linear? Yes. Yeah, it is linear, right? How do how could we have told from this equation m equals 50 minus 9d that that it was going to be linear? Jason. Because it goes down each time. It goes down by the same amount. What power is d to? One. Yeah, d is to the first power. Dude, there we go. This is linear. Okay. Lin e r. It is discrete, so that means do we connect it? Nope. No, it doesn't make sense to connect it. Okay. And the domain, what's my domain? Everyone write down your domain and then write down your range. Domain and range. Okay. What's my domain? Mac, what do you think? Yeah, one, two, three, four, five, and what else? Zero, zero, one, two, three, four, five. Could have given myself a little more room in there. Don't uh, don't pre-enter your uh, your cool guy brackets there. But domain is zero, one, two, three, four, five. What's my range? Yeah, yeah, it's not gonna fit in here, huh? Zero to fifty. Okay. No, it's not zero to fifty because you can't. You have to have specific numbers. Because it's discrete data. Yeah. Woohoo! It's just all your y values. Okay. All right. Hey, your domains, all your x's, range, all your y's. You got it. And I think you get the graph. You understand why? Question? Oh, I get it. No. no, remember you can't have half a DVD. That was a that was our initial discussion about this. We can't have half a DVD, therefore it's discrete. Yep. When you, hey, you guys, this is a key thing. When you when we we've taught you how to graph lines. And most of you just like, oh, points, we connect the dots. We like That's like some conspiracy when you're little kids. We give you connect the dots and say, connect them. They're like, woo! And you're like, yay. Okay, and it's a math conspiracy against you. Okay, look, you don't always connect dots. You, you've got to know the context of the problem. 
So in the context of this problem, it doesn't make sense to draw a line from here to here because that means you can buy half a DVD. Anytime you draw a line, you're listing a set of solutions. So right now I'm saying, when I, when I look at this graph, we're about done with this. We're not going to do any more of these today. But you guys, when I, when I look at this graph, when I draw that line, I have now said there are an infinite number of possibilities in between those two points. You can buy a quarter of a DVD, a third of a DVD, a half of a DVD, a three-fourths of a DVD, nine-twelfths of a DVD, a hundred, a hundred and first of a DVD. Okay? You are not, you, you can't do that. So when you draw that line, you've listed a whole bunch of extra solutions. Okay? When you erase it, now you're saying, hey, you could have zero DVDs or one DVD. Okay? Key thing there. That's why it's discrete. Okay. We're going to come back. We're going to keep revisiting these types of problems over the next couple days. Okay? All right. I want you to go ahead and clear up your desk right now.